the Lord is with you. And also with you. We continue listening to God speak to us from the gospel in the tradition of Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. When the day came for them to be purified as laid down by the law of Moses, the couple took Jesus to Jerusalem and presented him to God. For it is written in the law, every heir is to be consecrated to God. They likewise came to offer in sacrifice a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons according to the dictates of the law. Now there lived in Jerusalem a man named Simeon. He was devout and just and filled with the Holy Spirit and was looking forward to the consolation of Israel. It had been revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he saw the Messiah of God. Prompted by the Spirit, Simeon came to the temple. When the parents brought the child in to perform the customary rites of the law, Simeon took the child in his arms, praising God, and said, Now, God, you can dismiss your servant in peace, just as you promised, because my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for all people, a light of revelation to the Gentiles, the glory of your people, Israel. As the child's mother and father stood there marveling at the things that were being said, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, the child is destined to be the downfall and the rise of many in Israel and will be a sign that is rejected so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. And a sword will pierce your soul as well. There was a certain prophetess, Anna by name, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old, her youth long past, and she lived with her husband for seven years and then as a widow until the age of 84. She never left the temple, worshiping day and night, fasting, praying. Coming up at that moment, she gave thanks to God and talked about the child to all who were looking for the deliverance of Jerusalem. The couple had fulfilled all that was prescribed by the law of God. They returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew in strength and size, filled with wisdom, and the Spirit of God was with him. And this is the gospel, the good news of our salvation. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. By the words of the gospel, may our sins be blotted out. Amen. Amen. So once again, good morning. Good morning. And as always, it is good for us to be here. Troy did a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we gathered this morning on the last Sunday of 2020. And we might say... <laughs> days Today, besides being the Feast of the Holy Family, is also the Feast of John the Evangelist. We don't know very much about John other than his father's name was Zebedee. His brother's name was John. He was referred to as the Son of Thunder. And if you read his Gospel, which is very different, as we've said many times from the others, Let's see exactly what he was all about, that he came to prove that Jesus is the Son of God. He doesn't give us a lot of biography. He doesn't tell us very much about Jesus. But he focuses in on the miracles. He focuses in on the term that Jesus said many times over again, I am. I am the bread of life. I am the way. I am the vine, you are the branches. We know from uh, the scriptures, he lived, how long after Jesus? This was written, what, 90? 90. Yeah. He probably never saw Jesus, okay, physically. But it says that he was a fast runner, quote, quote, according to the Bible, according to the gospel. He ran to the tomb ahead of Peter but he didn't go in. Significant? But he's uh, an example that God's word is meant to be proclaimed. 
as the reading said, we're, we're supposed to proclaim who and what we are by the way we live, by the way we talk, by the way we act. And today is the Feast of the Holy Family. What, in, what makes up a family? Huh? Love, respect, care, honoring each other. There are many people who don't speak to their families at birth for whatever reason. Maybe due to uh, political leanings, uh, sexuality, <coughs> gender issues. Uh, facts of uh, religious belief. What makes up the family? This is a fam. This is our family. This is God's place within us. Huh? And we we listen to you know the ideal family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and we see nice images. Okay. We see a stable. We see. some pain in birth. I, was, I saw a picture the other day that many people in the mother church <coughs> and others are having a problem with the nativity scene in front of the Vatican this year. Figures that weren't really <coughs> the common ones. What do we have to see in the figures? What we have to see is God kept the promise huh, of sending the Messiah in time. In the fullness of time, God sends the beloved. And we hear in the gospel today, Mary and Joseph bringing Jesus to the temple to perform what was prescribed for by the law. Bringing Jesus to the temple and receiving, besides the gift of God, the, the words of the two old people. You know, many times, other than when we're in this pandemic, and you go to a nursing home, you go to a retirement home, and you just see people sitting around twiddling their thumbs because no one thinks of them. How many times have I been in facilities and, oh, Father, I haven't seen my children in years. So we warehouse the old people. We put them away. We keep them away from what we can see. They don't exist. And listen to today, the gospel today. Huh? Simeon, the old man, every single day in the church, this psalm of Simeon, is proclaimed in the night prayer. Now, Lord, you may dismiss your servant in peace, because my eyes have seen your glory of the people of Israel and of all people. Huh? <clears throat> this old man's words live and through all, gen all generations, through all the centuries of the church prayer. Huh? And the old lady, Anna, no words were given to her, but she proclaims by the way she acts, who and what this child is all about. And talking to Mary, Simeon says, your heart also will be pierced. Your soul will be pierced because you as a mother who give birth to this child will also see him on the cross. So in the family there's love, there's paternity. But there's also despair of times and bitterness. And what our job to do is very simply to take the love of God to proclaim it. <coughs> Not just when we feel like it, but every day. That's what we do to share the love of God. God comes to us in many different ways, in ways we least suspect. Let's keep our eyes open and let's see where we find God. Take God out. Present God to all you need. Don't be afraid to hide your cross. Don't be afraid to hide 
your love for one another. Love your partners, love your love each other, respect each other. At one time the reading was used to be read as wives be submissive to your husband. <laughs> Far from being what God expects of us. We're not called to be submissive, we're called to be lovable. We're called to let God in and let all the selfishness. <coughs> And while you do that, pray for me as I pray for you. And may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and give us peace now and always.